uh, Shalom, first and foremost, giving all the praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem Rechak Radash, double honors to the apostles, elders of Great Millstone, peace and blessings to the hopeful elect. Yeah, I want to do my response video on the individuals who call themselves One Body in Yahweh Shai, who said the title of the video was called uh, Israelites Are Wasting Their Time Waiting on Christ. And uh, I watched about 20 minutes of the video, and I just want to, uh, you know, through the Spirit, bring out precepts to, you know, rebuke the things that that individual is saying, because the Scriptures tell us, and I'll get that precept as well in Zephaniah 3 and 8, that we are to wait upon the Lord till He rises up uh, against the prey. The prey is Esau and these other nations during the time of World War III. But in the beginning of the video, when you listen to him, he was talking about how brothers are wasting their time just you know preaching and not doing anything else but just preaching he was saying how all brothers want to do is just preach and just you know do videos well let's just get the book of corinthians uh first corinthians chapter 1 verse 21 for after that in the wisdom of the most high the world by by wit sorry, for after that in the wisdom of the most high the world by the wisdom knew not the most high it pleased the Most High by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. So by the foolishness of preaching, this pleases the Most High, even though it may be a foolish thing, it still pleases the Most High to save those that believe on him, which is the elect of the nation of Israel. So us do, going out there and, as you say, wasting our time or wasting our lives just preaching, is it is, it is a thing pleasing unto the Most High. Scriptures, uh, let me see if I can find that. Is that uh, Romans 12 and 1? Right. It says, Romans 12 and 1, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Heavenly Father, through His Son, Yahweh Shai, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto the Most High, which is your reasonable service. So us going out there on the highways and byways is our reasonable service. Also doing the videos. Like his sisters say, uh, we are commanded to go out there to the highways and byways. So your 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 whole uh, church is called one body in Yahushai. Well, look at the example. That's uh, look at the example. Yahushai. Yahushai said he sat daily with those in the temple. There was not a day that Yahushai wasn't prophesying. There was not a day that Yahushai wasn't doing the works. Which yes, he did do miracles, and yes, he did heal people, and yes, when he did those works, that wasn't witchcraft that was through the power that his father gave him the spiritual power that his father gave him because to say that well then i guess moses was a, uh uh was doing witchcraft then i guess uh elijah was also doing witchcraft then but then the heavenly father says thou shall not suffer a witch to live you see it's just like the apostles and elders of great millstone said these men coming in are novices man they don't really know the scriptures they're babes and they still need to be brought up but they want to do their own thing and they're going to cause people to go adrift. They're going to cause people to fall. Let me go into this word reasonable. Let me see. I believe there might be something there. <clears throat> mm, no. All right. But yeah. This is your reasonable service to do. So you going out there on the highways and byways is commanded of you. And again, use uh, use the perfect example, which is Yahweh Shai, to go out there and prophesy. Yahweh Shai is the example. Like Paul says, I believe in he uh, Hebrews, look at the author and finisher of our faith. Yahweh Shai is the author and, finisher of, author and finisher of our faith. And look at what he did. He was out there, like it says, daily in the temples, teaching. If he wasn't out there in the streets, he was probably in the synagogues teaching. It's the same thing with us. When we go out there on the uh, on the highways and byways uh, once a week to uh, prophesy, we also do our our, our our daily our daily videos or how many uh, videos the Lord allows us uh, puts the spirit on us to do. This is how you feed His sheep. This is how you show the Lord that you love His sheep by feeding them, being the shepherd of His flock. Now, let me get a uh, second Timothy. Because this individual is saying that uh, people are wasting their time or brothers are wasting their time just preaching and not starting a business or not doing anything else. Well, going out there on the highways, when the script, uh, let me just get into it. 
So this is Second Timothy chapter three, verse fourteen. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned. Right. So what is the things that thou hast learned? The things that thou hast learned is not just uh, the breakdowns of the scriptures, but it's also the way and how you're supposed to do things. And the way and how you're supposed to do things is to go out there and prophesy to the people. So that way people see the uh, the banner that it talks about uh, um, in a uh, in um. Well, in Ezekiel, the 37th chapter talks about the stick, putting the, uh, taking two sticks together, one for Judah and his companions, one for Ephraim and his companions, and put the stick together. And that uh, that also goes into the other precept. And uh, I believe it's Psalms, the 60th chapter, and maybe the fourth verse, where it says, Thou hast lifted up a banner for them that fear thee. So when you go out there in the streets and prophesy, people see that banner, which is that stick, which is the, uh, with the 12 tribes on it, the 12 tribes coming back together, and people know uh, when they see the uh, 12 tribes chart, that's a conversation start. So that way they'd be like, okay, I see myself on that sign. What is this about? That is the foolishness of preaching to save those who believe, which is the elect. But if you're not out there prophesying, or if you think prophesying is a foolish thing, how are you supposed to bring in the, well, we don't bring in, but how is the Lord supposed to use us to bring in his flock? If you think uh, pr uh, prophesying is a waste of time, so it's not just knowing the breakdowns, it's also being brought up the right way to uh, how to do the ministry, how to do the work. And you have to go out there and prophesy. Going out there on the highways and byways is not a waste of people's time. The apostles and elders of Great Millstone have not wasted 30 years of their life. Look at the works that they have, uh, they have done. <clears throat> but now I want to... Uh, well, actually, let me get this as well. This is just a quick, uh, quick one. This is Hebrews 4 and 11. Let us therefore labor to enter into that rest. Right. What is that rest? That is the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is not here. The scriptures say, depart ye, for this is not your rest. Now, when it says depart, it doesn't mean actually physically departing. It talks about uh, departing out of this pl place mentally, which is America. You got to separate yourself from the world. So it says, let us therefore labor. And how do you labor? By going out there on the highways and byways, by going out there uh, and doing your videos and things like that, changing yourself, being conformed to the image of his son. That is how you're laboring. But if you're not going out there on the, uh, uh, on the highways and byways, which is a big thing to do because that is f fulfillment of Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, if you think that's a waste of time, then you're not laboring. And you're not really uh, one of the Lord's... Uh, uh, you're not really one of the Lord's disciples if you're not doing that. You have to go out there because people need to see that sign so that way people can be brought in. That sign is not also just for uh, uh, for our people, but it's also to uh, let the other nations know that, look, we're going to rule over you. And you're, uh, you're gonna, uh, there's going to be a recompense for the things that you have done to these people that are also on the sign. You know, the Lord hasn't just made us a nation, uh, a prophet to our nation, but also to the other nations as well. Now I want to get into the other thing where he said where, uh, you know, brothers is waiting for, well, like he said, I'm just going to say it verbatim. He said, brothers is just waiting for Christ to come down and, and you know, put the laws in your uh, inward parts and, you know, change you. Well, that's what's written. Let's get, uh, my father, I'm going to go to Matthews. Because this is what Yahweh Shai said he was going to do. See, these guys don't believe. These guys are perverting the gospel they're changing things around it's just, it's all it is because if you're saying that your is not going to come back with the chariots then you're no different than christianity because christianity them churches don't believe in chariots and all they look at that as aliens or whatever like esau puts up they don't believe in that like i said all that one body in your house is just a, a, a christian church with an israelite twist on it that's all it is so this is Matthew chapter 24, and as you can see, it's red letters. So this is Yahweh Shai speaking. It says, "And then shall, and then shall appear the sign, uh, sorry, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in clouds, in the clouds of heaven with great power and great glory." What are those clouds? Those are the chariots that the Lord is going to use to deliver His elect, like it says in the next verse. This is this is our deliverance. This is what the vehicles that the heavenly uh, uh, that Yahweh Shah is going to come back with, with Michael and the other archangels to deliver his elect. Verse 31. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds 
from one end of heaven to the other. So if you're sitting there saying that brothers is wasting their time waiting on Christ, that he's not going to do this, well, then you're sitting there saying that your house is a liar. And how could you sit there and say one body in your house shy? You see, it's like the elder Yahshua Amber said, either you're set up by Esau or you're just set up by Satan on the left hand to deceive people into, you know, for those that the Lord doesn't want. But either way, you're set up to, to uh, send people on the, uh, on the wrong path, the path of destruction. And you're going to have a lot of blood on your hands. Um, another precept to back that up, because there's a bunch of precepts to back up, but I just have a couple of precepts written here. I don't want to make this too long because I, I couldn't. I tried to watch maybe 30 to 45 minutes of it, but I just started getting angry. I only watched about 20 minutes of it. I could not watch all of that nonsense. This is First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 14. For if we believe that Yahweh died and rose again, even so them which sleep in Yahweh will the Most High Yahweh bring with them, meaning that those who die in Yahweh died in the faith. The Heavenly Father is going to raise up at the last day. And uh, to add to that, the elder of my camp, Elder Tazwan, had a beautiful testimony of a dream he had that the Lord made him remember where he saw these things happen and he got beamed up. And what is that? That's a fulfillment of, I believe, Joel, the tw uh, second chapter. And if I'm not mistaken, the 28th verse, if I'm not mistaken, it shall come in the last days that uh, your sons and daughters shall dream dreams and see visions. So right there, the Heavenly Father, through his son, Yahweh Shah, sent the elder a dream showing a fulfillment of this. But here it is, you're sitting there saying that uh, that's not going to happen. But we'll see whose word is going to hold up in these last days. So this is uh, continuing verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord, meaning that what? That they're still laboring, that they're going through Jacob's trouble. They're waiting until the Lord comes, even in the midst of Jacob's trouble. So, yes, you are to wait upon the Lord. It's not a, you're not wasting your time waiting upon the Lord. That's what we're commanded to do. Um, so like, let me read that again. Uh, that which we uh, that that we so like, let me start over. Verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Right. That those are also going to be raised up who died in the Lord. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of the heavenly father and the dead in Hamashiach, because that's the word there in Hebrew. It's not Christ. You keep saying Jesus. Oh, I'm sorry. You keep saying, uh, well, see that that Christ brings a vibration with it. You say one body in Yahweh Shai, but then you're saying Christ. What is it? Is his name Christ or is it Yahweh Shai? Because you see that can confuse somebody, especially someone who's new to the faith. But again, whether you're set up by Esau or you're set up on the left-hand side by the Lord uh, putting Satan on y'all, y'all set up to, uh, to uh, stray people away that the Lord doesn't want. That Christ thing has a vibration to it, man. Y'all got to make up your minds. Who are y'all following? Are y'all following Yahweh Are y'all following the white meat? Which one? Um, continuing verse 17. Uh, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. So what is that talking about? That's Matthew, the 24th chapter where I just read right there, just back in Thessalonians. Paul is just reiterating what uh, Yahweh Shah said. Yahweh Shah is going to send his angels. They're going to come with the chariots and they're going to beam up the elect. And those that died in the Lord, they're going to get beamed up as well. They're going to be the first ones to get uh, uh, changed and get the first ones to uh, be uh, in the chariots. And then those that remain, that didn't die in the Lord, that endured unto the end, they're going to get beamed up afterwards. So what are you talking about, man? Saying that brothers is wasting their time. Um, which he also took a shot at the apostles because he said uh, men is, uh, brothers is wasting 30 years of their lives. That was a shot at the apostles because they've been in this for 30 plus years. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I want to, uh, what else did he say? God, there was so much bullshit within that 20 minutes. Um, I'm just going to get the precepts I have here. Uh, I believe this is Zephaniah. I guess this, well, he said one more thing. He said how uh, brothers got to uh, set up their own uh, business or something like that. And um, 
set up their own kingdom, which you can't set up a kingdom in this kingdom. You know, he's trying to set up something here and to be uh, at peace here. This is scripture say this is not a rest. We can't set up a kingdom here. So, yes, Yahweh has to come back, destroy this wicked society, bring down Esau's kingdom so that way our kingdom can be established. And that way we get the rod in our hands because he was saying how how are brothers supposed to uh, tell slaves what to do? How are we supposed to have dominion over them? Well, we haven't been given dominion. Two precepts that come to mind, Job 9 and 24. Uh, Daniel 4 and 17, the Most High ruled in the kingdom of men and give it to whomsoever he want. And right now, Job 9 and 24, he's given the earth into the hand of the wicked. The Most High is the one who gives the dominion. Another precept that comes to mind, if I'm not mistaken, is um, um, in, uh, I believe it's Wisdom of Psalm, the sixth chapter, talks about how dominion from the uh, Heavenly Father has been given unto you. If I'm not mistaken, it's Wisdom of Psalm, the sixth chapter, the first verse. And there's one also in Psalms, I'm forgetting as well, that goes into uh, promotion comes not from the east nor the west or the south, if I'm not mistaken, but it uh, it comes from on high. So the Heavenly Father is the one that promotes people. The Heavenly Father is the one that gives people the dominion. So in order for us to get the dominion, we have to be patient and we have to wait. Scriptures say, in your patience, possess ye your souls. But if these men were grounded in the scriptures, if these men had a stable, uh, if Yahweh Shai was their foundation, they would know these precepts and they wouldn't be saying this foolishness. But yes, you cannot set up another kingdom on another kingdom. You want to set up, because according to them, they sit there, they're saying they're one body in Yahweh Shai, right? And that they're, um, you know, they're what you're going to do. You're going to set up the law, statute, and commandments. How can you set up the law, statute, and commandments in this land? People are not going to be down with that, and you're going to have Esau come down onto you because Esau has the dominion right now. Esau has the reign, which when you go into that word dominion, if I'm not mistaken, let me find out. I believe I looked it up. Yep. We can't have dominion over the people. Now it says lordship, sovereign or supreme authority. We cannot have supreme authority over these other nations, over Esau, until the power has been taken out of his hands, until he's been brought low, and the Lord's going to elevate us. But we need Yahweh Shah to come back, deliver us, destroy this man's kingdom, get those new bodies also. That's another precept because he was saying how... Uh, the Lord's not going to put these things in your thoughts. So that's to sit there and say that we're not going to get the new bodies, which Paul speaks about that. I'll just quote the scripture and um, or uh, I'll just say the precept in uh, 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, starting at the 51st verse, if I'm not mistaken. Talk, Paul talks about that new body, the corruptible uh, changing into be incorruptible, this mortal putting on immortality. So, yes, but these men are uh, say, are making all these things about the chariots, the new bodies, the new mind that we're going to have, uh, have that um, the Heavenly Father talked about in, the, in Jeremiah 31 and 31. Talks about uh, a new heart will I give you. I will give you a heart of flesh. So they're making all the scriptures sound like fairy tales, which is what uh, people sit there and say we sound like anyways. When you listen to these scoffers, they sit there and say, oh, yeah, those guys believe. Oh, when they see the UFOs, they say it's the chariots. People look at us like we believe in fairy tales. I don't even want to know what they think about the MOB. I don't even want to know. They might say some crazy shit. But, um... Let me see. Right. It says, uh, right here, uh... It says, in law, power of control, right of uncontrolled possession, use, and disposal from fifteen from the 1510s as territory or people subject to a specific government or control. How are we supposed to have the people under our government, which is the law, statute, and commandment, if we don't have the dominion, if we don't have, the, if, the, uh, if, power, if the transition to power hasn't happened just yet, although it's happening, it hasn't happened just yet because somebody hasn't popped up out of the sky as yet, which is Yahweh Shai. How are we supposed to get the dominion if we don't, uh, how are we supposed to select it? How are we supposed to have the people under the government, which is the law, statutes, and commandments of the Heavenly Father? How are we supposed to have the people under the government and the control 
if dominion has not been switched to our uh, to us yet see how these guys things is not adding up with the scriptures these men don't know the scriptures man and they've been set up like i said it's just a a christianity uh it's just a a christian church with an israelite twist on it but i don't want to keep rambling on i hope i've made the point i'm gonna just get this last precept and that'll be it Matter of fact, I'll get a couple more precepts now I can't to mind. Um, not Ezekiel Sakio. Yeah. Sephaniah. Yeah. Why is it going back to Salakia? Yeah. This is Zephaniah chapter three, verse eight. Therefore wait ye upon me, saith the Lord. Yahweh Bashem Shai until the day that I rise up to the prey. The prey is east on these other nations during the time of World War III. So we're supposed to wait upon the Lord. Let's get other priests where it says wait upon the Lord. This is Psalms chapter 27 and verse 14. This is uh, what David said. Wait on the Lord. Be of good cheer. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. I'll read that again. It says, wait on the Lord. Wait on Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. So again, you constantly hear over and over, it says to wait on the Lord. Let's get another one from Psalms. If I'm not mistaken, that's Psalms 37. Here it is. Psalms 37, 7. Re uh, rest in the Lord. And wait patiently for him. I'm sure this is David again. Yep, David. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself, fret not thyself because of him who prospered in the way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. So again, more proof that we're supposed to wait upon the Lord. So what are these individuals talking about, man? These individuals are here are set up to uh to uh lead people astray. But like I said, I don't want to keep rambling on. I pray that the point has been made. Like I said, don't listen to these individuals talking about their one body in the house shot, but then they're sitting there telling you that you waiting on the Lord is you're wasting your life. We have to wait on the Lord. We don't have no other choice but to. The, the Lord's name is Yahusha. He is the deliverer. Now, when you're waiting for, so like I said, I wasn't going to ramble, but when you're waiting for the cops, let's say somebody's trying to get in your house and somebody's chasing you, you know, Michael Myers or some shit is after you. And you call the cops, yo, so killers is killers after me, he's trying to kill me. You are waiting for deliverance. You're waiting for the cops to come and save you. Now you're not there gonna go fight Michael Myers because you know he's more stronger than you. He's gonna rip you into shreds. So you gotta run, you gotta hide, and you gotta wait until the cops come and then they'll deal with Michael or whatever. But you don't go trying to deal with Michael. You wait for salvation, which would be the cops. So that's the same thing with us. We're waiting for the Yahweh Shah to come back and deliver us out of this captivity that we're in. We're not waiting for Yah. We're not going to deter from Yahweh Shah and say, ah, forget you. We're just going to build here and we're going to be good here. No. Why you want to build in a place that's going to be destroyed? But like I said, don't want to keep rambling on. I want to give all the praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Racha, Kodash. The bonds to the apostle and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessings to the hopeful elect. Shalom.